Hello, my name is Brian Fischera, and this video is about trapped ion quantum computation. First, let's go over a bit of history. The field of ion trap technology found its beginnings in the 1950s, when Wolfgang Paul, a German physicist who won the 1989 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work, conceived of a device that would circumvent Earnshaw's theorem, which prohibits point charges from maintaining stationary equilibrium configurations solely by electrostatics, and thereby allow the trapping of a single ion. The Paul trap, also known as the quadruple ion trap, works by confining a target ion in an oscillating electric potential vector, so that the period of oscillation is faster than the time it would take an ion to escape the trap. In this way, it is possible to confine the ion in a way that would otherwise be impossible with the use of just electrostatic forces. Here is a mechanical example. In this video, the saddle on which the ball rests is a gravitational analog to the electrostatic potential in a Paul trap. As you can see, although the ball could not rest on a stationary saddle, it can be trapped by an oscillating one. This is essentially what happens in a Paul trap. Ion traps have various and extensive applications. For example, ion traps are an integral element of the so-called quadruple ion trap mass spectrometer, or QIP. The central directive of mass spectrometry is to be able to separate ions by mass. In quadruple ion trap mass spectrometry, ions are loaded through a number of apparatus into an ion trap like the one so described. Then, the ion trap voltage is varied slowly, so that after some time, ions will begin to escape the trap. The lightest ions will be the first to escape, and so by linking the ion trap to some detector, it is therefore possible to do mass spectrometry. Another application of quadruple ion traps is in making very accurate clocks. The current second standard is based on the electronic transition frequency of cesium-133 atoms between two hyperfine ground states. However, the so-called quantum clock is based on the ultraviolet frequency vibrations of a trapped aluminum ion. Quantum clocks provide an accuracy over 37 times that of the cesium standard, deviating by one second every three and a half billion years. However, the most important impact of iron traps has been in quantum computing. In 1995, Ignacio Sirek and Peter Zoller theorized the first implementation scheme for a controlled knot gate using an array of n trapped ions. Then, later that year, a similar scheme was physically realized by Monroe et al. at the NIST Ion Storage Group, after which research in trapped ion quantum computing took off worldwide. Now let's see how a trapped ion quantum computer might work. In 2008, David DiVincenzo proposed that any architecture with which one might hope to build a quantum computer must satisfy a number of criteria. For one, the proposed architecture must contain some two-level quantum system with which to identify a qubit. Any two-level quantum system will do, although most common are the spin states in a spin one-half particle, the polarization states of a single photon, the ground and excited states of an atom, or so. Also, one must be able to perform a universal set of coherent quantum gate operations. In many cases, it turns out this requirement is met by the ability to perform single qubit operations as well as controlled knot operations of pairs of qubits. Moreover, the proposed architecture must also have some ability for initialization, by which qubits can be uniformly brought to a single state before introduction to a quantum computation algorithm. Thirdly, the qubit must be measurable, or else the results of the quantum algorithm could not be read out. Lastly, the proposed architecture must be scalable, that is, its complexity must increase not so quickly when we increase size. In a trapped ion quantum computer, the first four of these criteria are met, and the last is a central challenge for present-day researchers. As for the existence of qubits, a single trapped ion actually has a couple two-level systems which can be treated and manipulated as qubits. The first of these depends on where the ion falls in its spectrum of harmonic oscillator states. If sufficiently cool, this becomes a two-level system of ground state and first excited state. Furthermore, the ground state of the ion splits into two states by our hyperfine interactions, which can also be identified as a two-level qubit system. In fact, both of these kinds of qubits are used in modern proposals for a trapped ion quantum computer. Once we have these qubits in place, 
it is possible to perform arbitrary quantum gate operations on single qubits or on single pairs of qubits by applying a pair of off-resonant laser beams to the ion, which drives stimulated Raman transitions between states. For example, Monroe et al. in their breakthrough 1995 paper realize a physical scheme to perform controlled knot operations by stimulating, via off-resonant laser beams, transitions between the zero up and zero down states, the one up and one down states, the one down and zero up states, and the zero down and one up states. Here, the first ket corresponds to the harmonic oscillator state, and the second ket corresponds to the hyperfine state. With this scheme, it is possible to perform single qubit and controlled knot gate operations generalizing a set of universal quantum gates. Now, the only thing left that we need are protocols for measurement, initialization, and scalability. The first two operations are accomplished in a way very similar to many other devices. Initialization is performed by common optical pumping protocols. As for measurement, it has been shown that, conveniently, a laser can be applied which couples to only one of the hyperfine qubit states, thereby producing fluorescence depending on the state of the qubit. This interaction does not couple to the harmonic oscillator qubit. So after measurement of a hyperfine qubit, a laser beam can be applied which switches the hyperfine qubit depending on the state of the harmonic oscillator qubit. And then another fluorescence measurement can be done which thereby determines the state of the qubit. The last requirement for a full-scale quantum computer is scalability. This is the area in which trapped ion quantum computers hold the most promise. Much of the recent literature has been dedicated to figuring out methods by which ion traps can be fabricated on microscale devices. In 2005, for example, Stick et al. reported the operation of a micrometer scale ion trap fabricated on a monolithic chip via semiconductor microelectromechanical systems technology. In particular, they etched a Paul trap from a doped gallium arsenide heterostructure then heated cadmium oxide to form isolated cadmium atoms in the vicinity of the trap. Then, they ionized the atoms using laser beams and were therefore able to trap single cadmium ions, as shown at this CCD image. One benefit of this technology in comparison to other architectures, like, say, nitrogen vacancy spin qubits in diamond, is the projected ease of scalability. With multiple ions on the same chip, it would be possible to build large entangled states with networks of photonically coupled trapped ions. Moreover, quantum information could be transported from qubit to qubit via Coulomb interactions. Indeed, in 2011, Mons et al. were able to entangle 14 individual trapped ions, setting a record for that time. A second motivation to study trapped ion quantum computing technology is that quantum operations can be performed with especially high accuracy. For example, in 2011, Brown et al. reported coherent manipulation of trapped ion hyperfine state qubits with an average error probability of 10 to the minus 5, which is an order of magnitude below the commonly considered threshold for fault-tolerant quantum computing and much more precise than many other leading quantum technologies. The present challenge for trapped ion quantum computing is to find a method by which to coherently manipulate large networks of trapped ions. Already, the field is seeing advances. For example, in November of 2014, Huckel et al. demonstrated a first step in a modular approach to scaling entanglement via quantum buses on three trapped ion qubits stored in two distinct modules. The researchers used phonon interactions to achieve entanglement between ions within a module, and photon interactions to achieve remote entanglement between modules. Additionally, on March 4, 2016, Mons et al. at the University of Innsbruck in Austria published a paper in Science which reported the realization of a scalable Shor algorithm using quantum computing. The researchers were able to factor the number 15 into 3 times 5 with greater than 99% accuracy using Shor's algorithm by coherently manipulating 11 trapped ion qubits. This discovery marks the potential beginnings of a large-scale trapped ion quantum computer. Thank you for watching.